All right, so we're talking about verifying inverse functions, the second part of these. Uh, one thing that we have to make sure is that the f and the f of negative 1, or the inverse, when they're plugged in together, equal x. And then whenever we plug the original into the inverse, they also equal x. So take a look at this. It says show that each of the following pairs of functions are inverses of each other. Uh, we've got f of x is equal to 4x minus 3. And g of x is equal to 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. So essentially what I want to do is I want to find two different functions. I want to find f of g of x. And I want to find g of f of x. So remember, f of g of x, that's the same thing as basically taking whatever the g function is and plugging it in where our x value is. So f of 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. So I'm going to take that f, I'm going to write it down, f of x uh, minus 3. And where that x is, I'm just going to uh, subtract it in, and I'm going to put in my g. So 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. I'm plugging g into f. If you notice, we've got a 4 outside. I want to simplify. So I get x plus 3 minus 3. And then 3 minus 3 will cancel out, and I'll be left with x. That is exactly what I want each of these to do in order to verify that they're inverses. Now, I can't just verify one specific way. I have to do both ways just to double check and make sure that they both work. Uh, because you never know. It might work one way, and then the next way uh, it doesn't. That usually happens whenever you get into higher math, uh, particularly if you do these in college, I remember doing quite a few where they, they didn't work out. But to kind of get you on the right track on how to do these, uh, we're taking it very, very simple. It should work out, uh, but let's double check it to make sure. G of f of x, uh, that's the same as really saying that I have g of whatever f of x is, which is 4x minus 3. So I'm going to rewrite my equation 1 fourth uh, x plus 3 fourths. That's my g of x equation. I'm going to erase where my x is, and in its place, I'm going to put 4x minus 3. Like I said before, this composite stuff, this is section 2.4, not really doing anything super new. Uh, it's just the concept of it, the idea of it is just a little different. I'm going to distribute here, so I get 4x over 4 minus 3 fourths, plus 3 fourths. Uh, negative 3 fourths and positive 3 fourths will cancel out. I'll have 4x over 4, and my answer will be x. Now, in order to receive credit on these, uh, you will have to show me all the steps. You'll have to show me plug it in, uh, and then some of the steps in between. Uh, you can't just jump right to the conclusion that it's x. Uh, Notice how both of them are x, so these would be inverses of each other. Okay. Remember, because I am recording this, if you do want to go back and watch the video at all, uh, you can always pause, fast forward. Um, you can always, you know, just email me and say, Mr. Stewart, you said this in the video? I, I don't quite understand this. Um, we can definitely go over it on Monday. Let's try another example here. Uh, example number eight. Uh, F of X is equal to negative 5X plus 7. And G of X is equal to negative 1 fifth X plus 7 fifths. Same thing, okay, split this up. I'm gonna find f of g of x, composite, and then g of f of x. And make sure that they, whenever we simplify, they equal x. 
So f of g of x, well, g of x is really uh, negative one-fifth x plus seven-fifths. So again, I'm going to write my f of x equation, negative five x plus seven. Notice how I'm kind of writing it big because I know I'm going to erase that x value. And I'm going to plug in negative one-fifth x uh, plus seven-fifths. I'm going to distribute uh, negative 5 times negative 1 fifth. That's just going to give me uh, x. Negative 5 times 7 over 5. That's going to give me, uh, I'll just say it here, negative uh, 35 over 5 plus 7, which is really x uh, minus 7 plus 7, which simplifies to x. On the other side here, uh, we're plugging in f of x into g of x. So really, I mean, I could rewrite this as what f of x is, which is negative 5x plus 7. I'm going to rewrite my g of x here, negative 1 fifth x uh, plus 7 fifths. Again, I'm giving myself a little room because I know I'm going to erase where the x is. In place, I'm going to put negative 5x plus 7. That was my f of x equation. Time to distribute. Negative 1 fifth x times negative 5x is just going to give me uh, 1x. Negative 1 fifth times 7 is going to give me negative 7 over 5. Plus 7 over 5. These two back will cancel out, and I'll be left with x. You don't have to tell me it works just by seeing x is equal to uh, all that equals x on both of them is fine. I just like to put that little thing just so you guys are aware. It, it does work out. Okay. Last example that I have for you, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, stop the video and then I'll kind of back up. Uh, is for the following equation, we need to find the inverse. Then we use the composite to verify the equations we wrote for the inverse. So unlike uh, 7 and 8 where they give us the inverse already, we're actually going to have to find the inverse first okay, and, then, uh, and then plug them in. So I'm just going to write here, uh, first find the inverse. Kind of remind myself of what I need to do. Uh, step two, I need to find uh, f of the inverse as a composite. And then step three, I need to find uh, the inverse with the original inside as a composite. So looking back at those uh, those different rules, first one, we have to make sure uh, if there's an f of x, we want to replace it with y. It looks like it's already done for step one. Uh, then step two, we want to switch our x and our y values. So x is equal to 3y plus 7 over 4. Step three on finding an inverse, we want to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply by 4. Or x equals 3y plus 7. Subtract 7. Or x minus 7 equals 3y. Divide by 3. Last step I want to do with uh, finding the inverse 
is uh, I really just want to rewrite the y as that f of negative 1 of x. So my inverse is 4x minus 7 uh, all over 3. I'm going to use that in my second and third steps to this problem. Give you a second if you're writing anything down. All right, step number two, I want to find uh, f of the inverse of x. I'm going to use my composite. So I'm going to take and I'm going to rewrite uh, my original equation, which is uh, 3x plus 7 over 4. That's my original and then where this x is, I'm actually going to erase it, and I'm going to put in uh, 4x minus 7 over 3. I know that kind of looks weird because it's a fraction and a fraction, but it's actually going to come out very nice here in a second. This next step I'm going to show in red just to kind of show you what's going on. Notice how this 3 on the outside is basically over 1. And the 3 on the inside is actually in your denominator. So I have a 3 in the numerator, a 3 in the denominator. These 3s are going to cancel out. So when those 3s cancel out, it leaves me with my next step as 4x minus 7 plus 7 over 4. And what looked like a fraction over a fraction, by the second step, it's literally just a normal problem from there. Uh, the sevens are going to cancel. One is positive and one is negative. You'd be left with 4x over 4, uh, which will then give me x. Last, we need to make sure that we can verify the other side. So uh, the inverse, and then we're actually plugging in the original into the inverse. So the inverse equation was 4x minus 7 over 3. I'm going to erase that x value and put in the original equation, uh, which was 3x plus 7 over 4. Notice how the same situation occurs. Uh, I'll show this in red for you. But these fours, one is in the numerator, one is in the denominator. They're going to cancel out. I want to make sure that I show all of my steps uh, in order to receive credit for my work. So 3x plus 7 minus 7 over 3. Cancel out my 7s again because one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So you get 3x over 3, uh, which then simplifies to x. Now, really, this is a nice way to check yourself, especially if you have to create the inverse first, which you'll probably have to do on the test. Uh, it's a nice way to note that, okay, if I didn't get x for either of those, then something is wrong with my inverse to start. That would be like the main trigger that I would kind of want to look for is, you know, something wrong with my inverse. I'm not getting X for my first one or I'm not getting X for my second one uh, in order to solve. 